I could feel it, I could feel it. Ephesians, the first chapter. Starting at verse 11 to verse 14. I'm going to read from the New King James Version. Amen. I ask for everybody that's able to stand, to stand in honor of God's word. Amen. Ephesians, the first chapter. New King James Version. It starts out like this. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that he who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him, there goes in him again, you also trusted that after you've heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Now, I'm going to read the message version, and it reads, it's in Christ that we find who we are and what we're living for. Long before we first heard of Christ and got our hopes up, he had his eye on us, had designs on us for glorious living, part of the overall purpose that he is working out everything and everyone. It's in Christ that you, once you heard the truth and believed it, the message of salvation, found yourselves home free, signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Ghost. Signed, sealed, and delivered. Signed, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Ghost. This signet uh, signed, sealed, and delivered. The signet from God is the first installment or the down payment of what's coming. <laughs> you thought it was all about speaking in tongues and running around the church, but it's a, it's a down payment for what's about to happen. I dare you to push your neighbor and say, it's just getting ready to get started. <laughs> a reminder of what we'll be get, what we'll get, everything God has planned for us a praising and glorious life can we say amen for the reading of the word the subject that I'm going to use today is the secret is out the secret is out I dare you to push your neighbor to your right and to your left and say my secret is out I dare you to tell the other one I couldn't keep it to myself anymore oh it's sneaking out it's sneaking out the secret is out amen be seated in the presence of the Lord. Allow me to exegete this so that we could go ahead and get to the part that we want to get to. Hallelujah. And so we understand, you know, uh, that we've been talking about being undeniable. Being undeniable is something that there is no dispute. There's no discussion as to what is going on in my life and who I believe. It is undeniable that God is the God of our salvation it's undeniable that I have been purchased by his blood it's undeniable that what he has done for me hallelujah cannot be measured or cannot be equated to monetary value it's undeniable that a wretch that I am if you really know who sat next to you you really would know that God's love is undeniable if you really knew the past and some of the uncensored stuff that I cannot share with you because you would probably pick up your purse and move to another seat that you don't understand how undeniable my God is that it is a saving grace it is a blood that that runs warm hallelujah from Emmanuel's veins that came down Golgotha's hill and found me in the midst of my mess and my tricks and my stuff hallelujah and delivered me from a life of sin it's undeniable it's undeniable that God can take somebody like me and make him a bishop it's undeniable 
that God has the ability to recycle things. Hallelujah. That even the one that's sitting next to you, don't look at them real good. You know, just go ahead and glance at them real quick. You know, that was a mess in the streets, but it's undeniable what God can do with remnants of stuff, what God can do with some mess. Hallelujah. I dare you to tell your neighbor, if only you knew. Hallelujah. What God has delivered me from, what God has saved me from, what God has set me free from. Well, uh, hallelujah. It's undeniable of his love by the mere fact that I'm sitting here in this sanctuary amongst the believers. It's undeniable. Hallelujah. What God has set me free from. Hallelujah. I know I ain't supposed to tell my business, but boy, if only you knew I was a Roman seven mess. The thing that I would not do, that's the thing that I did. The thing that I should not do, that's the thing I enjoyed. The thing that I should not do, that's the thing that I kept gravitating to hallelujah there was a, a wicked part of me on the inside that kept gravitating the stuff that I should not do but then he's undeniable because he brought me into Romans chapter 8 verse 1 there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus he took a mess like me and made him righteous he took a mess like me and filled me with the Holy Ghost he took a mess like me and allowed me to be shod with the preparation of the gospel on my lips hallelujah it's not that I'm better than anybody God just found favor in me hallelujah <laughs> I wonder if I got anybody that can understand what God has done for you. For 11 seconds, I dare you to give God praise. If you know that you were bow-legged Lou in the street, and now you're deacon, why not? Hallelujah. Please be seated. Please be seated. A prophetess left this anointing up in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like to excuse myself because I did not come. Hallelujah. But she left something up here with them boots. Everywhere she put her feet, there's an anointing. There's a fire that I'm stepping on. Hallelujah. I just feel the anointing that somebody's going to get set free today. I just have the anointing that somebody's going to be free from anger, from disappointment. Hallelujah. I just got a feeling. That everything's gonna be all right hallelujah if I got some Saints that believe that it's gonna be all right I dare you to rise to your feet and say oh yeah see y'all just hood I tell you <laughs> so the writer of the book of Ephesus is giving us some insight on how awesome our life was predestined to be. Our lives was predestined to be victorious from the beginning. God did not expect you to start from ground zero. He packaged you with a vacation plan on earth to experience his glory. Hallelujah. That no matter what you face, that you will always come out on top. You will always overcome despite the worry, despite the evidence against you that when your life is in God and you identify and find that your life is in God, that you are undeniably successful. And so we need to understand that the, the sign of being undeniable is by the Holy Spirit because that's where the sign seal and delivered comes from. And so I'm trying to exegete this so that we can get to the praise part. It don't make no sense to praise and you don't know what you're praising about. But I want you to have a foundation of what you're praising about. And so he brought up in Christ on two occasions. The first time he brought up in Christ is that we find out who we are and what we're living for. It is not for stuff that we live. It is in him that we live and move and have our being. And so we need to understand that the priority of our life is not, you know, uh, gaining, you know, possessions and acquiring jobs. That's a byproduct that we do. And really it has a subliminal purpose that God sends us out on these jobs so that we can represent who he is. 
We're, we're not there just for a paycheck, but we're there to deposit something in the lives of somebody that we encounter. And so, therefore, we need to understand who he is and what we're living for. We're living for him. We're not living for Costco and we're not living for, you know, General Electric or whoever we work for, the school board of Broward County. God is bigger than that. God God is the creator of all things. And so therefore he is the source and they are by purpose a resource. They're, they're, they're recycle source that God uses in order to bless you. Hallelujah. So that you can finance your purpose and your dream. Uh, and so we need to understand the first thing. And the second thing is that we are already established for a glorious life. And so it is with that mindset that I want you to understand about the secret. You're like, well, where's the secret coming from? I'm going to let you know. And, and so we need to understand that all of this is based upon the faith that we have in God. It is in the faith that we have in God that we have success, that we have strength, that it is in the faith of God that, that we understand who we are. And so, you know, Romans 10, 17 says that, that by, you know, faith cometh by hearing. Hearing is, you know, the, the Greek uh, definition of hearing is hearing or having access to a rumor in heaven. And so we need to understand that hearing is when faith is activated is because you got a rumor from heaven that God been talking about you. And so you need to understand that God's been talking about you. So therefore faith coming by hearing. And so hearing by the word of God, not just the logos of God, but by the revelation of who God is, that faith is increased by the revelation of who God is. I found that interesting because, you know, we think just reading the Bible will give us strength, but it is the access of the secret keys inside of God's word that gives us insight as to who we are and how we can overcome. And so, therefore, we understand the power of God in the sense of what we are being exposed to. God has a way of bringing revelation into our lives to disrupt our normalcy. And so, we need to understand that, you know, the normalcy that we live is disrupted by the revelation of God. And I said, God, how do I explain to them that? And so, he said, you know, you need to let them understand that I hold the key to acceptance of God, that faith is when you put your trust in me and your attention is on me, then I can manifest who I am. Follow me for a second. Don't, don't, don't get lost yet. And so we need to understand that that comes, how do I know that God is talking to me? Many times he uses trial and tribulations as spiritual opportunities to demonstrate where our faith is. Because truth be told that you really know the character or the content of somebody when they're in the midst of trials and tribulation. You really don't know how saved somebody is when everything is going fine and the bills are paid and everything that they pray for happened. But it is in the throes of when you don't know what's going to happen next. It's when you're in the throes that I've done everything I know to do and it's still not working out. That's when you can understand the GPS of where your faith is. And, and so you understand that when you're going through these things, that that's when faith now comes up and tells you this is where you're at. And so it is with, with, with that mindset that you need to understand that God begins to push trials and tribulation and give them permission to come in your environment so that it's, it serves as an opportunity so you can demonstrate who you believe. The character of somebody is not what they do when everybody's watching, is what they do when nobody's watching. Bishop Shepherd taught me that years ago, that it, it doesn't matter what you do when everybody's looking because you're trying to perform, but it's what you do when nobody's looking. Do you really pray when nobody's looking? Do you really have a worship when nobody's looking? Do you really, do you really believe God when nobody's looking, or do you resort to the things that you know in your primitive ways? Hallelujah. So, so, that, so that you can get a sense of comfort that you contributed or at least tried to get deliverance out of your own stuff. But, and so we need to understand that it is through that that we get 
the faith to be undeniable. And so, you know, it's funny. God talks to me funny. I was sitting at the house and uh, Spider-Man came on. Spider-Man came on and and I was watching Spider-Man and God said, you know, my children are like superheroes. I was like, superheroes, talk to me, God. I I don't know what you're talking about because I don't feel like a superhero. You know, sometimes I just don't feel like I even deserve the things that I have. You know, uh, superhero. He said, son, just follow me. And so when you look at superheroes, whether it be Spider-Man, Peter Parker, whether it be Superman, Clark Kent, whether it be Bruce Wayne and Batman, you know, I grew up in those era. And so therefore, superheroes was a valuable, you know, lesson for us. How many know about superheroes? Raise your hand if you know about super Wonder Woman. You know, you saw a prophetess talking about Wonder Woman. I said, you know, that prophetic is flowing because she's right in my vein. And so superheroes is something that's two aspects of superheroes that you need to understand. The first aspect is when they encounter and acknowledge that they are different than everybody else. And so they, whether they got bit by a spider or whether they were, you know, attacked by bats or whether they came from, from a land, you know, where, where kryptonite was, whatever it is that they had an encounter to acknowledge the, the thing that, 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 that they're different you know, that I'm trying to explain it in a way, you know, because these millennials, they don't know nothing about that. You know, they don't know nothing about that. You know, they know about Black Panther is the latest thing, you know, that they know about. But, you know, even in that, that he was introduced to an inheritance that he did not understand. And so, therefore, he didn't even want to encounter or embrace the, the, the thing. And so, when Peter Parker got bit by the spider, he started realizing, you know, that he, he had something he needed to hide. So, they kept their identity or their encounter a secret. And and so because they kept their encounter a secret, it's like they were like a bull in a china shop because, you know, it's like Superman trying to hold a glass. He hadn't understood the power that he had, so he broke the glass because he didn't realize he had that much power. And and so therefore, you know, but he's trying to keep it a secret. You know, he's he's trying to make sure nobody knows. Spider-Man is doing leaps and he's flying through buildings and running into buildings because he hadn't acknowledged the fact that something different than happened to him. It's sort of like a believer when you get hit with the Holy Ghost and you get filled with his power and and so when the Holy Ghost first comes in your life you really don't know the power and you're trying to understand this thing but you're trying to keep it a secret because you don't want your friends to now call you weird and call you different and so therefore you know even though every now and then a tongue want to come out you, you try to simmer it because you don't want nobody to know that you're different that something done happened to you at the altar that you were sitting minding your business business at the light center and the wave of glory came in and something took a hold of you and before you know it you don't know what done so they had to acknowledge their power they had to acknowledge the fact that that something had happened to them now what's interesting is that the enemies of society and those stories did not identify who had the power. But because the power was in their house, their families were attacked and not understanding why their families were being attacked. For some reason, problems came in their environment even though they hadn't told nobody who they were. And and so, you know, sometimes problems are in your life because you haven't owned up to who you really are. And so, therefore, you're still trying to keep the fact that you are a sanctified believer, that you are a Holy Ghost filled believer. And so you're trying to make sure that you blend with the crowd. But there's something different about you. There's something surviving about you. There's something elevating about you. And so there's something different about you. And so you try to simmer it. Peter Parker, his uncle, you know, his uncle that raised him all of a sudden got in the midst of, you know, uh, and I, I know I'm preaching, you know, superheroes, but, but allow me to, you know, to dissertate this, you know, the way that I feel it. Can I say it the way I feel it? And so, you know, he, his uncle got killed. And so now 
that put him in a position that had he used his power and let the world know who he was, then that might not have happened. Lois Lane got kidnapped for some reason out of the blue, you know, not knowing that he had the power. Hallelujah. Gotham City got put under attack by different people because Bruce Wayne did not want to leave the posh life of being a multimillionaire because there was comfort because when no, nobody know who you are, you can go home and don't feel accountable for anything. When, when nobody don't know who you are, you can sit at home and don't nobody try to call you and find out where you're at. When you don't know, when you don't acknowledge who you are, things can happen all around you and you act like that you don't know that you're the reason. It's sort of like Jonah when the ship started to sink, that Jonah was the reason because he did not acknowledge where God sent him. And as a result, a whole ship was compromised because of him. I wonder how many Jonas I got in here whose ships are sinking and you don't want to acknowledge who you are. And so we, we need to understand that the secret, there's certain things you don't keep secrets about. There are certain things you don't, you, you could keep a secret about how much money you make. You could keep a secret about where you bought them shoes. But when it comes to a life-saving source that God puts in your life in order to bring somebody out of a darkness of hell, you don't have a right to keep that a secret. Warm it up for me. I think I'm coming. And so that first step is the acknowledgement. Trying to figure out what's wrong. How come... I got this spidey sense. How come I could see things that nobody's telling me, but I could see it very plainly. I could see who is in my corner fighting for me. And I could see the ones that can, you know, that really don't want me to succeed. It's amazing that when the Holy Ghost comes in your life, you could, you, you all of a sudden get an extra, you know, it's like getting spiritual glasses that now you could hone in on something is not right and something is fighting against. Sometimes you're collaborating with the very thing that's fighting against your success. And so you think because it's smiling at you that they're for you but you need to understand and discern that not everybody to the party is celebrating your birthday you need to understand that everybody that's dancing with you really are not dancing to celebrate some of them are trying to find out when the next step to trip you up when the next step to expose you when the next step to push you out when the next step to get you to where they can be on top on top of you because the thing about having this revelation ah, the thing about having this revelation is that you have access to a level of faith what God does with revelation God gives you a hope that you can deal with what you're dealing with you know revelation is not just so you know you don't know just to know but you know so that you can have a posture and the how you handle the things in front of you. Because I see where God is taking me, I don't deal with the foolishness today. Because I don't need to be delayed. There's a hurriedness that comes with revelation. And so what God does, he suspends you in a supernatural realm between what he's done and what he's going to do. So revelation gives you a glimpse of what he's going to do. But praise gives you a reminder of what he has done. That's why someone with revelation cannot keep their mouth shut. You have to continuously praise God because that's the fuel to get to the manifestation of what he's already said about you. So, you know, the frustrating thing is when you know what God has said, but you cannot get there. Why you keep being distracted by the things in your life and you keep being distracted by people that don't matter. You keep being distracted by by pawns and things that come into your life that really don't asphyxiate or propel you to where you need to go. So you're sitting up there wasting time with people that ain't got nowhere to go. I dare you to tell your neighbor, I got somewhere to go. I ain't got time to be fooling with folk that ain't got no agenda, no schedule, no, no, no things on their list to do. Revelation. So, 
I'm going to help you understand something. And so it is with that first step. Now, when the secret comes out, is when the superhero now gets his suit. And he learns how to utilize his suit or her suit. Learns how to fly in the invisible plane. Learns how to block bullets. Learns how to leap buildings. Learns how to use that web. Spider-Man took all kind of time and was webbing up stuff that didn't need to be webbed because he's trying to understand the power that he possessed. I, I need you to understand, sometimes you put prey on stuff that don't need no prayer. <laughs> sometimes you, 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 you're webbing up stuff in prayer that the, all it needs is a decision. You just need to decide to leave that fool. You don't need to pray about leaving that fool. You just need to decide, I don't need to be messing with this. You don't waste no anointing and no prayer on stuff like that. And that's a keen plan of the enemy. Make you spill oil where you don't need it. So when you need it, you ain't got none. And so you sitting up there wasting oil and prayer and anointing on stuff that really don't matter some things just deserve a walking away from i done said something y'all missed an opportunity to praise god and so you need to understand that that's the first step the second step is embracing and harnessing the thing that god has given you it's giving you a power in faith you undeniable faith because you understand the reason that you have faith, faith is trying to get you to the predestined, the predestined, the prepackaged. You're not praying for God to give you victory. You're praying that God will reveal the victory. And once he reveals the victory that's already been there, now faith helps you to get there. It is the fuel that helps you to get there. And so it's not your performance. That's why you could sit up there and keep messing up and God keep advancing you and try to get you straight on the journey to get right. See, it's not about a performance thing. It's about a commitment and a heart thing. See, we're trying to be committed to stuff we're not convicted about. And, and so if there's no conviction, there cannot be no commitment. And so I'm just doing things just out of the, the realm of that's what we're supposed to do. But when you get somebody convicted, what conviction is, is that you have an internal view of where God is trying to take you and you're willing to accept it. That you're saying, do or die, I'm going to do it. Job had conviction. He said, though he slayed me, yet will I trust him. I will not go anywhere. Joseph had commitment that no matter what lies they told on him, he still believed in that vision of the coat of many colors. You know, David had commitment. No matter what happened to him at Ziglag, that he was committed to have victory because he was ordained to be victorious. Oh, you need to understand that you're ordained to be victorious. You're not ordained to just exist. You're not ordained to just live. You're not ordained to just make it. You're ordained to be victorious. You need to win with some stuff left in the bank. You need to win with some stuff left in the coffer. I wonder if I got some folk that understand that they're more than conquerors through him that love them. I dare you to make yourself known and stand to your feet and say I am here. So we need to understand that when they acknowledge and embrace their strength that now the enemy now shift the attack from their family and now try to take them out. Now it is a fair fight. Now it is a fair exchange because now you understand what I possess and now you're coming against me. Sometimes when the enemy tries to attack your family, it's a distraction tactic. It is not a direct attack tactic. It is a distraction tactic. But when they know that you have acknowledged that you are the righteousness of God, the attack shifts to you and now you have to utilize your weapon. Ah, God has given us two particular weapons that we 
utilized when we understand we have undeniable faith. The number one that we use is we use praise. We use praise because praise is an indicator that you haven't given up yet. Praise is an indicator that you're happy when you really should not be. Praise is an indicator that even though things are not the way they should be, I still believe in the God of my salvation. You see, you need to understand unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and die, that it is left alone. But when it goes in the ground and die, then it multiplies lies and become fruitful oh baby you need to understand that your praise is just that important when your family start talking about you you need to give god a praise when the enemy seems to attack your health you need to give god a praise when it seems like that you just running in mud that's when you give god a praise i may not be able to move my feet but i could move my mouth and i could let god know you're still good that you're still you see the thing about it is opening up your mouth is an indicator of what's on the inside out of the abundance of the mouth uh, the heart the mouth speaks and so therefore you need to understand that praise is more than just making noise but it is a declaration of what you house on the inside of you. No matter how wounded a lion is, that the rest of the pride do not go in close when they hear the roar of the lion. Because when they hear the roar of the lion, it means that he got one more fight left in him. So I better stay away from that king of the jungle. See, when you got one more praise, it don't matter how much you're laying on the ground. Your praise let the enemy know, oh, they got one more trick up their sleeve. They got one more win in their belt they got one more tactic against me so when they're praising God that means heaven hears and when heaven hears that when heaven's army start coming are you understanding what I'm telling you praise that's the first acknowledgement when someone of faith understand that they're undeniable they're not trying to impress you they just begin to praise God. I don't answer your allegations. I just praise God. But you're not even acknowledging it. It must be true. Hallelujah. I knew you were lying. Glory be to God. You must be guilty because you're avoiding the question. Praise be to our God. And when it gets real bad, he kind of love See, because now you're talking spirit to spirit. So now it's not flesh to spirit. Now you have transcended to another language. And now the enemy is scratching his head because he doesn't have the interpretation. He cannot Google what you just said to God. But when you speak in tongues, the spirit now, which gives utterance, is having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Uh, the other way you know that the secret is out because I'm almost done is the fact that you pray you know that song says this is how I fight my battles I fight my battles on my knees I don't sit up there and run to Jojo and them house and try to explain how I write and how they're wrong. I just pray about it. Because I got, heaven, I got heaven's angels waiting to run errands for me. And to get things straight for me that I ain't got to say a word. Sometimes you just got to close your mouth. Go into your house. And just go ahead and get on your knees. And begin to worship God. Not complain about them. But worship how good he is. They talking about you. And they seem like that they're, they're about to win on you. Because the evidence is mounting. But what they don't realize is that you're a child of righteousness you were born wrong you were born in iniquity and, uh, and so you understand that so now you begin to pray to God God you are good and your mercy endures forever oh God oh you are the sun and the moon and God we ascend to you now we don't ask you to come down here but we come up to you oh God you are so gracious that you decided to save a wretch like me how great is your love that you found favor in me oh god i give you glory because you are good and beside you there notice i ain't say nothing about your issues i ain't say nothing about who talking about you i ain't say nothing about the firing that they're about to put on you i ain't say nothing about the eviction because when you pray to god he'll take care of your stuff 
This is how I fight. While I pray, God is sending folk to take care of my affairs because he don't want the worship uninterrupted. He don't need you to interrupt the worship with him to go take care of people that ain't got no stake in your future. But you need to go ahead and stay in who has your future in his hand. That who has your destiny. It's etched in eternity. Who has your purpose already identified before the foundation of the world. So I'm just praying to God. God, you are so good. Oh God, I worship you. Oh God, I praise you. Oh God, you're so wonderful. Oh God, you're so glorious. Oh God, thank God for your love that hung on the cross for me. I ain't got time to be dealing with foolishness. If you decided to stop messing with foolishness, I dare you to stand to your feet and say, I got a shift in my life. Thank God that we understand that it goes beyond just believing. I'm not talking about the level of faith that is beyond, that is just believing or acknowledging God. But it is an incredible strength found in the darkest of places that validate the fact that we have picked the right side. That it is a strength in the darkest places. This is when you know that you're undeniable. That when things come against you that you didn't even ask for. Some things come against you to try to stifle your worship. Right when you worship, you start getting rhythm in your pursuit of God. It just seems like things come to interrupt your flow. And interrupt your cadence. And interrupt your motion. And you need to understand that that's because now they realize the secret is out. That now we need to get this one person out and you seem like well you're more important than me why you want to come after me because they realize that there's a mantle on your life that God realizes and the enemy also realizes that there's a man that you a superhero in hiding that he's trying to keep you from the phone booth to change he's trying to keep you in, in eye view so that you don't go in the closet and come back a hero he trying to make sure you don't spin around and become Wonder Woman so he keep you distracted hallelujah so that you can stay in your mortal self but the devil is a liar. I am victorious. I am better than this. I am, oh, I'm a winner. Hallelujah. I am, hallelujah, undeniable. Uh, stand to your feet. Y'all not going to work me to death today. Hallelujah. When you are undeniable your praise in your prayer you continuously stay in repentance because here's the thing about being undeniable the events of your life speak to where you are and speak to who you are some people know you and you ain't even told them who you were that's because you're undeniable there's some folk that will know who you are don't like you ain't never say hi to you because you're undeniable but then there's also conversely some folk that don't know you but they could see that you carry something that they need are you understanding me so we need to understand that God does it like this and he uses the tribulations he uses our own setbacks to straighten us up to expose where we really are in him I pray that you got the essence of this message that when you leave here you realize that the secret is out that you are a superhero walking around here that you got some victories you ain't won yet because you ain't acknowledge and when you acknowledge go get your uniform because every superhero got to have a uniform some of you is favor, some of you is faith, some of you is prayer, some of you is worship. So what, whatever your uniform is, go get a tailor-made uniform for you. Do you not understand that even in the ecclesial elevation, that in the bishopric, when you reach the bishop status, that they don't have ready-made garments for them to ship to you? 
everything that I wear is tailor-made to me. That's why when David went to go fight Goliath, he couldn't use the weapons that Saul gave him because they're not tailor-made to him. He was undeniable, but he could not use what he wasn't familiar with. He had to acknowledge that his strength was found fighting the lion, the tiger, and the bear. And he used the same tactics to defeat the giant. What do you have that will give you undeniable victory? That's the question today. Have you acknowledged the fact that you are not ordinary? Truth be told, you should know you're not ordinary for the things you've been through and you still have your right mind. See, because when you go through stuff and you internalize it, the enemy don't mess with your stuff, he mess with your mind. And he have you thinking in your mind that you can't do it. But when you captivate your mind and you get your mind back, hallelujah, there's nothing you can't do. I don't care how many divorces run in your family. When you captivate your mind, you'll get married once and stay there. Don't matter if you never had a father. When you allow God to get your mind, you could be a great father and leave a legacy for your sons and daughters. Ah, the secret is out. If you don't mind, just bow your heads with me. I'm going to ask Prophetess if she will come and lead us in a word of prayer. But I want you to meditate on this. Brother KP, you're undeniable. The secret is out. You're a worship leader for the nations. It don't matter you ain't sung to nations yet. And notice I said yet. When your heart is affixed, God will take you places that you couldn't even bargain for. Hallelujah. Can we bless the Lord for the word on this morning? I'm going to ask the worship leader to take the platform with me as we get ready to pray. A couple of things I want to share in your hearing. Very powerful message on this morning. As Bishop began to talk about, and I want you to listen to this as we get ready to pray because the prayer is the seal on what you have received today. But as he began to talk about the secret, I thought about how many things in our lives that we're gifted with, sometimes we're afraid to acknowledge it because of the accountability that comes along with it. And as he was preaching, I was thinking about these things as it pertains to the superheroes that he mentioned today. And one thing I noticed with all of them, Bishop, is that their secret the thing that was within them was sought out by the enemy. They had no idea that they were the enemy's target. And it had nothing to do with them personally. And I see with us, sometimes there are things in our lives that we make it so personal, but it really is about what is inside of each of us. So they were under attack and didn't even understand why. I know you missed that. It began to make sense to them because then once they realized that there was something that was in them, the thing that was in them was not just for them. It was for the greater good of a city, of a country, or even their world. There are some things that God put inside of us that is not just for us. So when we make the decision to not deal with it, not address it, or not accept it, we hold other people hostage in our unbelief in our fear, or whatever posture we have put ourselves in. Then they realized that the benefits that were beyond them would cost them something. Each one of them had to give up something about themselves. Superman had to give up the love of his life. I need y'all to get this. Wonder Woman had to leave her family. And Batman had to give up posh comfortability of being able to get whatever he wanted. When you look at it in that sector, you realize that some things you have to give up because there's a greater good on your life, not because God is being mean, 
but he's a very purposeful God. Even when Bishop mentioned that Superman's uncle died, even in some of the trouble in your life, there is good. And you have to get to the other side to recognize that the thing and the pain that you are dealing with is a part of his plan to make you undeniable. See, even though Wonder Woman was Wonder Woman in her island, she was undeniable to be the difference to bring change to her people. Some of the things that you are battling with, or that you are fighting, are about your change, not just for you, but for those who are connected to you. This message is about your secret is out because you've been hiding, you've been playing small long enough. Today is the day for you to own every part that God has put in you. Whether you are afraid, whether you don't know, or you don't want to know, today is the day for you to make the decision to be the difference. Not just talk the difference, but own all of it. Kirk Franklin recently came out with a song that says, either I'm God of all, or I'm God of none. There is no partiality in him at all. We make the decision to be undeniable, not because we want to be important, but because I was chosen to bring forth change. Can you get with that today? So as we get ready to pray, and I'm glad that it's nice and quiet because we were very exuberant at the beginning, and I love an exuberant praise, but I love understanding more than anything. So we got to go home differently. Our minds must shift. Don't wait on anybody to tell you how great or how mighty because they had to discover within themselves what they had. Then other people would recognize, but you must recognize first. Lay hands on yourself, said, I must be first. As we get ready to pray, at an event yesterday, we did an exercise with our guest speaker, and she said to write down the 10 most important people in your life. And everybody started their list. And when I wrote mine, I initially I wrote my husband, my kids, and, you know, all of this. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And I crossed it out, and I put me, my husband, my kids, like that. And I showed it to the girl next to me and I said, I almost missed that because I realized I am the gift. That's nothing cocky. You are the gift, not what you can do, not what you bring to the table. You, your presence in the earth. God called for your presence in the earth. Your mama met your daddy because he hooked them up. It doesn't matter how it happened. You are here because there's a call for you. So when you realize there's a call for you, you stop existing. No matter how much Superman wanted to fit in, he just didn't anymore because there was something special about his life. As we get ready to pray, I'm going to ask you to grab one person by the hand. This is what I feel in my spirit I love this song, you are the source of my strength. And that came to mind because we look at ourselves and we said, I'm not that strong to do that thing. You realize that he is the source of my strength. Everything that he commands me to do, every part of my life, he is the source of my strength. I don't have to depend on me. Are you getting this? I want you to squeeze that hand of the person that you're touching and say, he really is the source of your strength. Aren't you glad you don't have to do this by yourself? He is, as the musicians play that softly, I want you to receive that in your spirit. He is everything that you need, and I promise you, it's in you. And this is a time to discover the best parts of you, the most beautiful parts of you. It's already in there. You don't have to ask God to give you one more thing, but it's time for you to discover and bring forth. It's time to build people. It's time to bring it out. You're not a secret. You're not anybody's secret. 
Even in a relationship, I refuse to be anybody's secret. Love me out loud. God said, I want you to be big in the earth. Let the people know I have purpose for your life. They need to see you coming out. They need to see the thing that almost took you out didn't. Look at them, said, they need to see your life on top. Yeah, they got to see it. He is your strength. Squeeze that hand. Father, we thank you for being our strength today. Thank you for the refresher. Because life wears us out. Breathe on us now, Holy Spirit. Release your strength on us like never before. That we can see ourselves the way you see us. Pour on us. Release a new level of power upon each of us today. You know what we have to face before we even face it. You already deemed us victorious. Thank you for the victory. Come on, people. Thank you for the victory. We got to see ourselves on top. Never, ever at the bottom. I dare you to say, I see myself rising now out of the ashes. I receive your strength to overcome every sickness, to overcome every obstacle, to overcome everything that came against me. I receive your strength today. I am a winner. I am victorious. I am undeniable because your strength is in me. I feel the strength, God. I can stand toe to toe with my giant. You are the source of my strength. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we just receive? Let's take a few seconds to worship the Lord. Let's take a few seconds to worship the Lord. Come on.